that's all from me. Over to Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and for, for the introduction. I'm really happy to be uh, presenting uh, this, those op multilingual options for you. I'm, uh, I'm Matt Pilarski. I'm a technical evangelist at uh, G Digital Cube Japan. Uh, I speak uh, Polish, English, and German. I used to be in the past a supporter at the WPML multilingual plugin where I had the opportunity to deal with a lot of multilingual websites and this also inspired me to create the today's presentation. I started using WordPress in 2008. Uh, I was a regular user getting all the knowledge from internet, codex, WordPress support forums, but everything changed when I started being active in the WordPress community. I met a lot of amazing people, full of passion, open to share their knowledge, so this was a, a point for me that everything changed. Um, like I said, I'm originally from Poland, but currently if live in Japan. Uh, I work at Digital Cube uh, where, where we do WordPress hosting on Amazon Web Services. We are a small team of 15 professionals. We all are WordPress con contributors and basically we love what we do on WordPress and love to share our knowledge. So that's why I'm also here. Um, okay, let's start uh, with the languages of the internet. Um, I will share with you some stats. Um, on this slide you can see that uh, world internet usage and population, Asia and Europe have the biggest number of internet users. It's a giant market full of potential customers. Um, all you need to do is to find a uh, way how, how to get to them. Uh, on this slide, you can see the number of uh, internet users by language. You can see clearly that English is dominating, but on the next slide, you can see top 10 languages used on uh, websites all over the world. Over 55% uh, of uh, languages used uh, globally on the websites is English. So if you, especially in UK, who, who speak English would like to get to foreign customers, I would, uh, I think that's a op good opportunity to translate your website into different languages. What are the benefits of having a multilingual website? Um, and let's, let's, uh, let's do it uh, definitely the correct way because as you can see on some of the examples, it's not good to use like automatic translator. Um, you can reach more customers, you can enhance your professional image, you can it increase the trust of your visitors and definitely your website will be more uh, SEO friendly. Google definitely will like that. Um, from my own experience uh, as a foreigner in Japan, um, when I look for a place, for example, to eat lunch somewhere, I always use Google, and why? Because I used to go to a lunch cafe and I ordered, I thought this was french fries, but this was uh, chicken bones that looked like french fries, so. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I don't want to make an, a, 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 another mistake like this. What basically Google is doing, it proposes you uh, the English, for example, version of your website, and it shows your customers how to, to, to get this. So that's, that's the, one of the biggest benefits uh, to get to your customers. Uh, types of translations. Um, there are machine translations. Uh, basically, it's the fastest, easiest way. Uh, good for emergency situations, but it's, uh, it has a lot of uh, misspellings, uh, logical errors, and uh, it can often to, uh, lead to misunderstanding your content. Um, 
the, the, you can test the automatic uh, translations. It's a plugin available for WordPress, but you will really fast uh, notice that only human translators are able to uh, understand the different uh, cultural, linguistic, and semantic factors. Uh, to, to leave the same effect of the source text. Uh, so let's get to human translations. Those are the, the type that uh, we will focus today. Uh, we can split human translations into three groups. Um, In-house translators, uh, for example, uh, your company employee or a friend who's uh, bilingual and is good enough in uh, that language so he can translate, help you with the translation of your content. Uh, freelance translators, uh, professional individuals who can uh, hire online or uh, offline, specific, uh, who, who you can hire for uh, translating online or uh, offline for translating specific content, or uh, translation agencies, which is similarly to individuals, uh, but they can be more uh, sp uh, specified on a specific topic, like uh, technical translations or something like this. Uh, on the slides, uh, a slide above, you can see the most popular uh, translation services where you can find professionals to translate your website content. Uh, one of those uh, services is I Can Localize, uh, which is a service integrated with uh, a plugin that I will mention uh, in the uh, future. And um, also, I would like to. Um, you, you, when you prepare your website for translation, uh, you should. Um, think the whole concept of translations because uh, before, before sending a whole website uh, you should consider the aspects that you, you want to achieve. Uh, do you really need to translate your whole website or only a specific part of your website uh, which will allow uh, your customers to get the details that you want to share with them. Also, uh, are uh, your customers from the same cultural circle? <coughs> uh, can you change only the language of specific elements, like buttons, like the text, like uh, some images or uh, specific elements on your website? Or if they are Hebrew or Arabic, do you need to rethink uh, about redesigning the whole, whole uh, layout of your website? because? Uh, the, the Arabic uh, language is extremely long, so a short sentence that is in English can be much more longer, double or tri triple long, uh, and, and it can break your whole website uh, layout. So this is another aspect that you should consider when translating a multilingual site. Um, in some cases, you don't even need a plugin because it's popular to use a lot of plugins. Uh, you can only, for example, create uh, one page with the foreign con content in, uh, in the foreign language. You can consider uh, creating a specific category or a custom post type uh, for, for the second language. Or you can also duplicate your website and put it into uh, another domain or a subdomain. But the biggest disadvantage of this is uh, you, um, you will have to uh, update all the plugins, update all the websites, basically maintain two websites, which can, which, which can be uh, annoying. Or uh, if, you're, uh, if you have enough knowledge, you can also consider uh, running a multi-site uh, WordPress installation where you put all the specific languages. Um, if all the suggested uh, before methods don't want, uh, didn't work for you, uh, you can consider using a plugin. Uh, there are many plugins, but uh, you need to remember you don't have to uh, use a cannon to kill a fly. Before you choose the pay solution, um, try some free plugins or check many, many 
many of those plugins and check which, which plugin is uh, the most satisfying for you. Also, um, uh, as an ex-supporter from WPML, don't enable on all languages possible that you have because um, you can see the results. Um, uh, it can crash your website or, um, if, or cause a lot of problems, so uh, don't enable all the possible languages. Um, let's start with uh, one of the most popular plugins. It's a paid plugin, WPML, multilingual. It's a very complex solution with a lot of features. Uh, it's paid and it's, uh, you get also global uh, support there. Uh, WPML allows you to create uh, translator accounts on your website and they are integrated with the I can localize the translation service that I've mentioned before. Uh, so you can send uh, really easy your content for translation to the uh, tra uh, professional translators. Uh, from the current version, it's also open to integrate with other uh, translation services like Cloudworks, Bbox, and uh, many others. From um, my own experience as a supporter, most of the uh, problems were caused by uh, performance issue um, or compatibility issues with, with other plugins or team. But um, the performance issues were um, sometimes related to really poor hosting. If you, if you uh, try to run really big website uh, with, with five language versions on a, a cheapest shared hosting, this definitely won't work for you because such a big size uh, website, uh, such a big website with that size, uh, is, it's not a good fit for that kind of hosting. Also, the compatibility uh, problems are not always fault of uh, WPML because some of the plugin makers claim to be compatible or team makers claim to be compatible with WPML, but the reality is different. Um, some developers fix the, the bugs, some of them don't and don't care, so you can be stuck with a non-working website and uh, basically you don't know who should you blame for that, the WPML or, or the plugin maker. That's why the WPML also opened a Go Global program, program to to make uh, uh, to connect to developers and make the plugins uh, compatible with them. That's a good approach. So, uh, like I said, everything depends from the developers who created that plugin. Also, if you're interested in e-commerce, uh, WPML has a multilingual extension for uh, WooCommerce. It's uh, available from the uh, WordPress plugin directory. If you have any questions about that, you can visit Denise and Andres, who are at the sp uh, sponsor booth. You can talk to them. I'm pretty sure you can. They, they will answer all your questions. Okay, enough about WPML. Multilingual press, uh, that's a different approach. Uh, it's um, based on WordPress uh, most uh, powerful core feature, which is multi-site. It enables you to create a network of sites in different languages, uh, all uh, interconnected and related to each other. It comes in two versions. Free, free one, you can download it from the site, and the pro version comes with dedicated support, uh, premium support. Another popular uh, free plugin is Polylang. Uh, basically, you write uh, post pages and create categories and post, uh, uh, post tags as usual in regular WordPress. Uh, and then you can define the language uh, to, for, for each of them. Uh, the language is uh, set uh, either by um, the language code in URL, or you can uh, also use a different subdomain or domain pen language. It also allows that. Uh, Polylang comes with a custom, uh, custom, uh, customizable sorry, <laughs> language switcher. Um, 
provided as a widget or a navigation in the menu. And it's also integrated with a professional translation service uh, that you can install as an add-on, which is Lingotech Translation. Uh, Qtranslate X. Uh, don't confuse it with Qtranslate, because Qtranslate is a discontinued plugin. Uh, they advertise, uh, they serve to be super easy and working uh, as working with a single language website. Uh, with Qtranslate X, you can uh, also describe fields uh, which needs to be uh, multilingual through a JSON encoded configuration file. Uh, and the whole process of this, how to do that, is described in uh, the integration guide. So this is another approach. Uh, Bogo. Bogo is created by uh, one of uh, my team members, uh, Takayuki Miyoshi. Um, he is the author of the most popular uh, contact form 7 plugin. He decided to create also a multilingual plugin. It's very easy to uh, use and conflict free. Uh, it assigns one language per a post and does uh, not create any additional custom tables in your database. So it's really easy and really light to use. Uh, last thing that I want to mention is uh, Babel, uh, which, is, which, which got acquired uh, by Automatic. It's still a better version and not, not is officially published. But if you would like to try it, you can uh, find it on the GitHub. Um, conclusion, during WordCamp uh, San Francisco in 2014, Andrew Nassin uh, said the future of WordPress is global. I fully agree with that. WordPress has a, a very big potential. It's running currently over 25% of websites globally. Um, there is no perfect solution for translating your website for now. Everything depends from your need. Uh, who do you want to target and what should be the end result that you want to achieve. But definitely don't be afraid uh, to experiment with uh, different solutions. But remember, try to keep things uh, as simple as possible to avoid performance issue and user confusion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Matt. I, I think we've got plenty of time for questions. And yes. I suspect we'll have a good old Q&A going. So, a oh, question from the floor straight away. Here we are, sir. Hi, Matt. Hi. Um, you mentioned about the quality of hosting. Um, in when you're, just as a rough kind of guidance, what kind of Minimum specification VPS would you say for? You Everything depends uh, if you use a plugin. Like, for example, if your plugin creates additional tables in your database, this can be uh, sometimes uh, heavy for your hosting if you uh, use a shared hosting. Um, if you decide to create just just a just couple of pages that will be in a specific language, you can do that on a really small hosting. You don't have to worry about that. So everything depends from the specific plugin. You can always check the uh, plugin requirements, and you basically you will see there if if uh, uh, your hosting will be enough to run that website. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, do we have more from the floor? Um, okay, well, maybe I'll... What would you... Um, are there any really obvious mistakes that you're seeing, particularly at the moment? Because I'm, the impression I'm getting is that as WordPress is developing and new plugins are coming and some plugins are, are moving off as well, yeah. right now, what are the sort of... The, the, the maybe less obvious traps to avoid. I mean, you mentioned don't switch everything on on mm -hmm. uh, WPML, but are there others that we should be looking out for just at the moment that maybe people haven't heard of yet? Um, I guess it's, uh, it's always good to think about the content that you, that you would like to translate because many uh, users or company owners 
want to translate everything. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to translate everything because this, this specific content won't be useful anyway for a specific group in the different country. Okay. Because so there's a combination of translation and localization yeah. as well. Um, these days, do you find that there is a, a, a very general sort of one-to-one -one mapping? So this geographical reason, this, this you, I guess it's going to depend in different segments and industries, but uh, are more languages being used in more regions? Is, is it becoming a more multilingual world, even if you're not necessarily spreading over a wider area? Um, this is from, from my experience, for example, yeah, in okay. Japan, uh, yeah. uh, they don't like to use uh, other languages than right. Japanese. Yeah. Uh, and they don't like to also use solutions from all over the world. So, for example, if there's a translation plugin that was made in Europe, US or somewhere, they would rather choose a solution that was made in Japan. Okay. They, 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 they are more strict to, to anything that comes from outside of Japan. Okay. So a uh, question at the back there. Actually, oh gosh, they're springing up left, right, and centre. You know, we'll come to the front again and at the back there. Hi. Um, a lot of the emphasis on translation is obviously for front-end users, but yes. um, we've got a, a use case where it's the back-end that's more important. We've got a couple of Polish websites. The front-end's fine. We've, they're, they're in Polish and that's yes. it. But on the back-end, uh, our bookkeeper is an English-speaking person, and so if we're selling stuff in Poland, she needs to understand what to do on the back end to actually process the bookings and uh, mm. process the payments. So she needs more back end support. So is there any um, translation tools that are actually more focused on the back end than the front? For uh, translating the back end and uh, such, if, if it's an online store, I know how um, sometimes it's also everything related to a specific laws in a specific ta uh, country like tax law or uh, stuff like that. Um, I would say in a situation like that, I would consider cr creating a custom solution to deal with those things. Uh, because basically I haven't heard about um, Polish localization of an e-commerce store. I know that uh, because of some uh, specific German regulations, there's an add-on for WooCommerce, uh, WooCommerce the Air, or um, I think it's, uh, this is the name of the plugin, which adds some specific features, e-commerce features for, for uh, a store locali localizer. And f when I work as a supporter at WPML, it, uh, we were able to translate, uh, or users were able uh, to translate that plugin without any problem. So the, the, the website worked. Um, I hope this answers your question. Hi, Matt. Yeah, hi. Um, do you have any tips for managing uh, translated or rather localized content that is uh, apart from a translation? So, for example, um, in different markets, you quite often need to use a different image. Yes. Um, for you know different markets, um, have you got any tips for managing that and you know currency trans? Uh, Conversions. Uh, so, for uh, if it's an e-commerce uh, and you use uh, WPML, you have the extra WooCommerce uh, plugin, which allows you to uh, to uh, add some other currencies or um, uh, add other uh, different images to, to, to your products. So, uh, in that specific language version, you 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 will see uh, the content for that language. Or um, the rest of the plugins, the free plugins, are not as good for with translating that content. So you can also consider like creating a second website for, for with a store in that specific language. That, that, that I would say that's or a multi-site with uh, the WooCommerce extension, which would allow you to sell this content. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, the back there. Hi. Um, okay. Just actually to, to continue on from, I think, well, the chap in the corner was asking, uh, I'm working with a client at the moment where we're translating uh, the site into 
um, well, two different sites, but it's the same code on the site, one into Spanish and one into Vietnamese. Okay. Um, the Spanish is great because somebody in the staff speaks Spanish, so it's yeah. quite easy to do, but the Vietnamese, Vietnamese has been more difficult. But one plugin that we found useful is one called Local, Loco Translate, mm -hmm. and it allows you to translate or to manage the translation strings of all your plugins and themes that you've got installed. Okay. So if the plugin community haven't translated the plugin, then you can still translate all the back end and all the things that, that, that work with that. Um, but the hardest part is actually being able to run the back end in more than one language. It's fine in, in um, multi-site, it's a little bit harder in, in single site, but that's something useful to look into. Okay, thank you for sharing this. Okay, I think we had another question up at the back as well, towards the wall there maybe. Or, oh yes, gentleman there in the hat. And then we'll come over to you, sir. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Hi. A uh, quick question. It's about the relationship between the, the lingual, uh, you know, the multilingual and the multicurrency. And uh, there is any tool or any procedure to manage that relationship? Um, is there a to, to um, actually... Uh, like I said, the, 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 the extension to WooCommerce can allow that, but um, I haven't unfortunately found any free uh, solution to deal with this. So sorry, I cannot help you with this. Okay, thank you. Always worth asking, I suppose. Yeah, You're yeah, the man sure. to ask, and that's fine. I, I, can, I can prepare ne better next for next time. For well, I, of course, and your contact details are up yeah. there, and I'm sure. Yeah, we'll feel free to ask to me. I will try to yeah. find something for you. Yeah, and we have two days of a great WordCamp. Yeah. So we could possibly find something over the course of that. Uh, could we have the mic back over to the gentleman in the corner with the green top? Sort of teal, perhaps, not green. It's a very nice colour. Um, I was wondering how you go about selecting a plugin, because there's quite a few set of six to pick from. What criteria do you use to um, select each project? I would say the popularity. Uh, I didn't mention uh, like all of the possible plugins uh, basically, the user uh, number from uh, uh, the WordPress re plugin repository was was the key factor uh, in this, because I can I could say about Q, Q Translate that uh, you can find definitely somewhere in uh, the internet information about that, but this plugin is not de developed anymore, so there's no need to uh, talk uh, about things like that. Also, um, if you have a, a plugin which translates that, you can feel free to contact me, propose me that. Uh, I had a really good feed, feedback after Word, WordCamp Paris when I was doing a similar presentation. And if this plugin is good, I can definitely also add it to, to, to my presentation or use it in the future or give a review. So I'm open to, to, to add new things to, to that. Okay, thanks. Uh, down here at the front. Hello there. Hi. We have a spelling and grammar website, which is in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's in America, in Canada, and in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. So it's the same language, but different spellings. Uh, definitely not the same language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any yeah. tips on how to manage that? Um, WPML allows you to add uh, those uh, English language versions, so you can create basically like uh, American English version of that website or Engl British English version of that website. You can, I guess, it's, uh, do the approach like with with uh, uh, Polylang or the other plugins. So create an, another version of of that page or that post in that language. Um, or a custom category for that language. Everything depends from, from your situation. You can always try to like, do specific uh, language version of that website to, to a specific country. So I would have to... You, you, we can talk later about this, so uh, I, I would uh, need to see first your website to, to decide what would be the best solution for you. Do you have another question from the floor? I have, uh, oh, yeah, maybe, oh, come on then. 
But you had some uh, really interesting uh, stats and I, this, mm -hmm. stat. I was wondering if it would be possible to see, share the one so we can access them later. <coughs> the, 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 yeah, the internet usage, and I think the next, there was another slide, yeah, these, would it be possible to share them or how can we access them? Uh, do you want to share the stats with you? Yes, yes, please. Okay, sure. Just, I, would, I can send you my email. Thank you. Yeah, sure, no problem. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, will you be uh, sharing your presentation? Yes, I will yeah. be sharing okay. my presentation on SlideShare, so uh, uh, feel free to contact me on Twitter, on email. I can uh, send you those uh, uh, slides, definitely. Okay. If you have any other questions, feel free to come to me after the presentation or just message me. Okay, that'd be great. Well, before we close, I, I think we ought to, to uh, offer a lovely, heartfelt workout. Congratulations to Matt and to Cal and to Alex.